All right, everybody. Corn harvest is done. We uh, we met our contract. Corn turned out pretty good. I am uh, currently taking the truck and the green buggy with probably about, I don't know, 150 or 200 bushels, something like that, to one of the local yards. Uh, everything else went down to the bigger yard. So everything went pretty good. Um, I'm fairly pleased. So as we're driving, I'm gonna have a conversation with you about how this went. Um, the Gleaner L with the eight row corn head, the 830 corn head, that corn head is super, super quiet and really did a great job that it did uh, really nice. Uh, the only thing it didn't do real good was, was cut the stalks. It stripped really well, did pretty good. Uh, the combine had a few little, uh, Old Glen had a few little issues, but not bad. Um, I did stuff the shoe one time, so that was fun. We had to clear that out. And uh, so basically what I had to do was just slow down. I, I was trying to push a little bit late last night, trying to get it all done. And uh, then our, our great friend, uh, for, for friend, mm -hmm. uh, great friend Levi Moots, um <laughs> old buddy from way back when is has taken care of us on the trucking side and done a tremendous job levi uh, was very patient very helpful just so I happened that levi really likes the Deutz tractors too so uh i had a little bit of an advantage there but uh so we it turned out uh, we met our contract. We had a certain amount contracted, and uh, we met that contract, so we got what we anticipated. Um, and then we talk about yield. Now, I know that there are guys out there who their yield is double what our yield was. It's okay. The point of any business is return on investment basically now when we started planting corn I planted with a planter we'd never planted with and it had a few errors the monitor didn't tell me it was missing a couple rows at some point so that didn't go extremely well but not horrible so we had some skipped rows and things like that um, you know, planting didn't go quite as smooth as we had hoped for it to go. But what was planted came up, did pretty good. And as it did pretty good, we were more confident in what we could contract to send. And turns out we met exactly what we were intending to contract. So here it is, here's the final numbers. That corn with skipped rows and no fertilizer, no fertilizer, one spray, no fertilizer, that corn made 125 bushel to the acre. Now you're thinking, oh my gosh, that's, bless your heart, that's sad. Hold on a minute. Current price on fertilizer right now is crazy, extremely high. And after talking to an agronomist, he informed me that, he asked me, he said, what are you planting behind? And I said, beans, soybeans. He said, okay, any kind of soil at all, any kind of population at all, you can get 100 bushel corn, no fertilizer over soybean residue. So the, so the residual, residual from soybean residue will provide enough nutrients for 100 bushel corn. So, I went with it. Um, this year, expense-wise, things were tough. Income-wise, things were tough. So, we intentionally did everything we could to pinch pennies. And with that being said, I ended up with 125 bushel corn. 
And I know there are guys that are out there getting 200, 235, even 250 or more. That's fine. So you either already had soil to do that or you've added stuff to the soil to make that happen. And if you've done that, you've spent a lot of money. Now, I'm not dogging on anybody's farming practices. My point is, don't dog on mine. If I've accomplished what I intended to accomplish and my return on investment is what I intended it to be, I count that as success, easy for me to say. And those successes are what we're really in for. As I said, our profit per acre has got to be higher. I mean, actually what we cleared. There is kind of a tipping point where those points cross, where yield and input cross over and you don't make money because of what you've put in. And for us, we were trying to control inputs or costs so that our ultimate end goal, what we receive back is profit. And we've done that. Now we're small scale. So, you know, not really making a big deal. And I suppose over large amount of acres that would make a big deal. But ours is very important that we are very careful with our return on investment. And our return on investment on corn turned out really well. Our return on investment on beans turned out really well. Now our total yields were not phenomenal. They were nothing to write home about. Not the best we've ever seen, not the worst we've ever seen. Uh, we had an extreme amount of rain. And so that sounds like it's a really great thing, but it makes it really hard to finish crops out and you end up with things like mold and things like that. We didn't have that issue, but long story short, here it is. I count the, the year a success. I had a certain amount that I wanted to produce and contract, and I fulfilled those contracts and more. With that being said, that is the kind of end goal. We did what we set out to do. We had some downs along the way. We had some breakdowns, and we're gonna have some post crop season expenses. Uh, we had several hours of repair from Ohio Ag Equipment who did a great job. Um, we, we went ahead and fixed our bigger grain bin. It had not been used in a while, so I, I was concerned that maybe we'd need it. So we went ahead and had somebody come in and make sure that it was all up to snuff, and it is. I've got the invoice sitting right beside me. That's an expense. Those are expenses that you're gonna have whether you have a big operation or a little operation, doesn't matter. As the old saying goes, if, some, if you own things that either move or breathe, they will break and die. And uh, both of those things happen, and they happen to us. No different than they happen to other people. And so we had to kind of keep our heads, heads up. Now this is kind of a long vlog. I figured this was a good time to do this because I was just driving. We didn't get a lot of footage of corn harvest, and part of the reason for that is we were really just trying to get it done. And YouTube videos of our farming are not our number one priority. We are not full-time YouTube. We are full-time farmers. I'm a full-time minister, part-time blacksmith. So YouTube does not take number one priority. So that's why I'm doing this now. So really, when it's all said and done, I count this season as a success. Um, we're we're going to take care of our bills. We've got seed uh, ordered and paid for for next year. Um, I'm going to go to our fertilizer company, and I'm going to negotiate with them, see if we can't get some fertilizer booked and prepaid for next year. I know what we're planning on planting this year too, so this next season. The wheat is in the ground, so the wheat is in the ground, ready to go for next year. It's about two to four acres shy of what we intended to plant, but that was just simply because our crop rotation in the fields got kind of messed up, but we've got it under control, we've got a plan. 
We're also going to follow up with, and I will probably have a video uh, explaining this, a cover crop called triticale. And triticale is kind of a hybrid of rye and wheat. And it's a good cover crop because it puts nutrients back in the soil and it can be a spring forage. So I've got someone who uh, will probably want it for spring forward forage so that he can basically wet wrap or insulage uh, for this stuff. That gets that off the field and it prepares it for me. That field is gonna be in corn. The reason why I'm excited about that is uh, the triticale actually puts nitrogen back in the soil. So it's not a consumer of soil. So, so the excitement there is, again, I won't have to use as much fertilizer. Now next year we can't keep sucking on the soil to do what we want it to do and expect great results. So at some point in time, you do have to amend the soil. You do have to do things just like on your gardens and things like that, same process. So next year there will be some fertilizer. We will add some things to the soil, but we'll be very particular about it. I'm gonna get soil tests this winter, uh, the late winter and uh, so I can get them back in time so we can figure out how much of specific stuff we want to put in the soil. Uh, and I don't want to get into all the agronomy and all that kind of other stuff uh, of it all about how the science of it works, but it works. Uh, one of the things I, I want to tell you guys is that it can be very, very frustrating. We had a very uh, challenging season uh, with breakdowns and weather and uh, several other things. And there were times where I was pretty frustrated. I was pretty down. But I know, I know what the Lord has intended for me. Uh, and, and if I don't, I need to pay attention because if I'm not paying attention, uh, as, as the scripture tells us, he too will make that clear. So, we got to be aware. We got to be alert to what God has intended for us, and and not get distracted by the things of this earth. They're just not that important. Uh, this is part of our livelihood, but it's not the end of, end of our world. Uh, so, anyway, thank you guys so much. We're very excited that corn harvest is done. I'm going to dump this corn uh, at a local uh, granary. And uh, that'll be the end of corn harvest. We're about to finish up our soybeans and double crops. And then harvest will be done. All the cover crops and winter crops will be planted. And uh, then it's easy going from there on out, right? <laughs> Just kidding. God bless you guys. We'll see you on the next one. Take care.